I rock jazz because uh, it's what I feel, it's what's in my bones, it's, it's uh, the music that I was born to hear, you know, it's the music that I heard when I was born. It's the music that, that's a part of my family. Um, I come from the heritage of, of this music, from uh, some of the ones who were there when it was innovated and, uh, you know, I, I definitely feel a responsibility to the music you know, as as the musician that I am. Um, and I think the, the music itself is so broad that it allows me to do pretty much whatever I feel in myself and still be under the umbrella of the music. You know, the thing about this music is uh, it's definitely a waiting game. It's, it's about longevity, you know. Uh, you, you know, the change of guard happens, you know, as time goes, goes on. And we as pianists, we as musicians, you know, and as we as jazz musicians have to keep our tools sharp, you know. And uh, I think you know, there's, there's quite a few musicians that have some innovative things that just haven't been able to really get it out there. And as of late, um, the last, I guess, the last five years or so, there have been quite a few pianists that, that have contributed to the motivation and, and, and you know, the bringing on of new uh, listeners to the music. And that, you know, my man Robert Glasper is a contributor to that, um, you know, uh, Jonathan Baptiste. There's a few, you know, great pianists out there that are really doing their thing. So, um, I think, you know, if you can wait around long enough and 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 still stay positive, and and be ready when it's your turn, and you got something to say, then people will hear you. And I think that's just what's happening right now. The jazz police affecting music. I think. Uh, in some, in some ways, you have different levels of jazz police. You got the jazz police critics that can make or break somewhat your career uh, if they like or don't like what you do, uh, or if what you do falls to the left or to the right or what's, what, what the mainstream calls jazz. But for me, uh, the effect was a motivation uh, uh, to really make sure that I encapsulated who I am in my music and could stand by what I do uh, in the name of jazz or whatever creative, creative moment, you know, or mood I was in. Um, and, you know, I embrace jazz to the fullest, so, and I come out of a tradition, uh, a, st a deep tradition in the music. And uh, so the effect that it had on me uh, in my early part of my career, um, as I did my, around my third album, um, I, I kind of got a little friction and, and uh, a little eyebrow up uh, when I came out with Roads Ahead, which was uh, the, the group that uh, I started in 2000 with Terry on Gully, Taurus Mateen, myself. Uh, it was basically a drum and bass uh, format record, but with improvisation. So we were able to, to tie you know, the improvisational part into that record. But, uh, that was the first time I deviated from what's called jazz, and um, it was an experience because uh, although the, the critics uh, were shocked at first, they embraced it, um, and I think part because I spent, you know, my first three records really exploring uh, the acoustic piano and, and the idiom of jazz to, to the fullest that I could do at the time. And, um, I think when I introduced the new ideas that were in my head, it was also at the change of, of the millennium. So it was embraced and it wasn't embraced by some, but, but I think it was a, a pathfinder in a way. Um, that record created, a, a, you know, along with some of the work that had been done before me, you know, people like, you know, Greg Osby and Steve Coleman and, and, and the, rest of, the rest of my peers and elders. I think it carved a little, pathway for a lot of musicians today. Uh, I don't consider any of that stuff that's going on when I'm making my music. It's, it's important for me to be in my own space, my own head space. I don't even consider the idiom, you know, it's an idiom, uh, uh, it's, it's a word. It, but the music itself 
is true to itself. When you hear it, you know what it is. So uh, I also do things way outside of the genre, you know, and so I, I don't put any restraints on myself when I'm creating. Now, once I've created the product or, or the, the, the whatever the masterpiece or the offering, uh, then you then I figure out what genre it's, it's in if, if if need be. But I've been blessed to produce my own records up until this point. I have never had a producer, and um, so I've I've I, I made a promise to myself that I would be true to myself and not try to jump on a bandwagon, um, you know, and 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 try to figure out what other people are doing. I just want to stay on my path and and put out the things that that were close to my heart. So I'm neither disappointed or discouraged or anything by what's happening. I think that's all just energy, you know, that, that's there, and I use it, you know, as a positive, uh, positive uh, 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 source of, of um, fuel, shall I say. I transmutate that energy into positive fuel to create. Um, I've also been pretty much in the underground uh, although I've been, you know, front and center, my, me as a leader, I've pretty much been in the underground, you know, that's what people consider me. I, I never consider myself that, but that's what people say. So being there, I don't see any reason to conform to anything other than myself. And uh, unless some producer comes by, you know, that I respect enough to give him the reins and, and he's got an idea or she's got a great idea, well, then I'll follow another path. But my path is my path. Great. Well, I'm Mark Carey, and I rock jazz.